Hi, this is Rich Neapolitan again. Recall that last time I introduced knowledge-based systems and rule bases. And we ended by developing a rule base for the plant classification problem and noting that the rule base by itself did not have a lot of value. Well, let's look at that rule base again. This is the rule base for the plant classification problem. It contains a lot of knowledge but without some way of processing that knowledge, it's not useful. Today we will talk about inference engines or programs that process the knowledge base and do something useful. One thing we want to do is to be able to use the rule base to do the same thing that a classification tree can do. Here is the decision tree or classification tree for the plant classification problem. Recall that it starts at the top and asks questions that determine the type. Once it knows the type, it asks questions that determine the class. Once it learns the class, it asks questions that determine the family, which is what our goal is. We want to process the knowledge base in such a way that it does the exact same thing. The program that does that is called backward chaining. The backward chaining algorithm processes the rule base in such a way that the questions are asked of the user in the exact same way as the decision tree. The, the algorithm essentially builds the decision tree on the fly. Now I'm going to be walking through the way backward chaining works by looking at the rule base for the plant classification problem. It is on page 39 of your uh, contemporary artificial intelligence text, I suggest that you print out that page before proceeding so that you can refer to it because I'm going to be referring to the rules by, by number and it will be useful for you to have it in front of you. Now I called the backward chaining algorithm back chain and here's how it works. The user first enters a goal, <clears throat> which in this case is family. The user wants to know the family of the plant. Back chain cycles through the rules looking for a rule whose conclusion is family. So if you go to your rule base you'll see the very first rule concludes that family is Cypress. So Backchain uses that rule. If Backchain can learn that the premises in rule 1 are true it can conclude the family is Cypress. So that is if it can learn that class is gymnosperm and leaf shape is scale like then it can draw that conclusion that family is Cypress. So Backchain tries to determine if the premises are true. It first tries to determine if the first premise in rule one is true by recursively going back to step one and making class its new goal. So now we go back to here and now class becomes the goal. Backchain is a recursive algorithm. So now our goal is class. We're back at step one and our goal is class. Same thing happens. Backchain cycles through the rules looking for a rule whose conclusion is class. If you look through your rule base starting 1, 2, 3, 4, the first one is rule 5. It concludes that class is angiosperm. If Backchain can learn that the premises in rule 5 are true, it can conclude the class is angiosperm. Again, it can learn they're false, then it can know to give up on this rule also. So Backtrain tries to determine if the first rule in Rule 5 is true by refer recursively going back to Step 1 and making Type its new goal. So now we go back to this step and Type becomes our goal. So again, we're at Step 1 again and the current goal is Type. Backchain cycles through the rule base looking for a rule whose conclusion is Type. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 concludes that Type is Herb. So rule 7 is the first such rule. If Backchain can learn that the premises in rule 7 are true, it can conclude the type is herb. So Backchain tries to determine if, if the first premise, actually it's the only premise, in rule 7 is true by recursively going back to 1 and making STEM its new goal. The current goal is STEM. Backchain cycles through the rule base looking for a rule whose conclusion is STEM. There is no such rule. This is a terminal condition. And, and every recursive algorithm has a terminal condition, a way to end the recursion, otherwise it would go on infinitely. So 
The terminal condition is, is when there is no such rule, and in that case, backchain asks the user the value of stem. Now recall, that's exactly what the decision tree did. This is the first question asked of the user by the decision tree. Now, this, is, this gives you a feel for how backchain work. Backchain continues in this manner, resulting in the decision tree being built on the fly. I won't walk through the algorithm anymore. Um, the purpose of this was to give you a feel for how it works, not so that you could go and code the algorithm yourself based upon my presentation. The actual algorithm appears in contemporary artificial intelligence in, in the chapters that I provided for you. So you can find the algorithm and look at it if, if you are interested in actually seeing the, the details uh, of how the algorithm works and or implementing it yourself. Now, backchaining is a recursive algorithm, and it's, it's a little complicated. A much simpler algorithm, which is non-recursive, is called forward chaining. That's the other standard way to process a rule base. And it's used for this situation, um, in the case of a rule base such as the one we're looking at currently. Suppose we, we have a list of true assertions. In other words, suppose somebody tells our biologist they know all these things are true about the current plant that, that we're looking at. Our goal is simply to use this knowledge to conclude all we can from them using the knowledge base. Here's the forward chaining algorithm. This algorithm is also in your contemporary artificial intelligence text, but it's so relatively simple I actually am showing it here in this presentation. The algorithm's name is forward chaining. It takes as input a, a set of things known to be true. Those are the, what I call the assertion list. That's the input to the algorithm. The output is the same set, but with all the assertions that can be deduced from those assertions using the rule base. In other words, we go through the rule base look based upon what we know to be true and concluding what new assertions are also true. Here's the procedure. It's called forward chain takes as input the assertion list. I use a pseudocode similar to uh, my old Pascal days, which still to me is the best pseudocode language, where VAR means it's a pass by reference variable and you can change it. This is the pseudocode used in, in the artificial intelligence text. I use a, the keywords procedure when it is a procedure and the keyword function when it is a function. Right. These are local variables. There's a local variable called rule. And here's how the algorithm works. I let rule become my first rule. And then while there are more rules, I check my rules in sequence. If all premises in rule are in assertion list, meaning all these premises are true, we, and the conclusion in rule is not in the insertion list, if we have not already added the conclusion, then add the conclusion of rule to assertion list. So if, if you find everything's true, you add the conclusion, and now you have to go back to your first rule. Now, why do you need to go back to your first rule when you add a conclusion? Because these rules are not sorted in any particular way, so now a rule that you've already passed up might have all its premises true, and you need to check it over again. All right. If the all premises in my current rule are not true, I just proceed to my next rule. All right, so I cycle through my rules in this manner. Whenever I find a rule, all the premises of the rule are true, I add its conclusion, I go back to rule one. Eventually, I'll get to the bottom of my rules, there won't be any more rules, and I'll get out of the algorithm. Again, this algorithm is also in, in the text, and it's discussed in the text, that you can consult the text for more information about the algorithm. Forward chaining can be made more efficient by sorting the rules before doing forward chaining. The sorting scheme is, is, is like this. If rule A's conclusion is a premise in rule B's antecedent, then we place rule A before rule B. All right? So with the rule sorted in this manner, there's no need to return to the first rule when a conclusion is added to the true assertion list. You can think about this a little bit and go and sort them yourselves to see this, but if, if 
rule A concludes something and rule B follows it and rule B has in its antecedent, by the antecedent we mean the, the first part of the rule, has that as a premise, it will already be concluded before you get to rule B. So there's, so, so there's no need to go back when you make a conclusion for rule A because anything above it will not have that conclusion is, is one of its premises. All right, so this is the scheme actually used when you use forward chaining in this manner so you don't have this inefficiency of going back to the rules. Now, that is not the only way to use forward chaining. Uh, in fact, it's probably the, the, the less common way to use it. It's more often used in diagnostic systems. Diagnose is the process of determining or analyzing the cause of a problem or the nature, it's really the cause. A diagnostic system is one that performs diagnosis. <laughs> now, that's pretty obvious, but that's still it's worth uh, formally defining it. The classical example, at least to me, because I've talked about this stuff for so long, is medical diagnosis, in which you're trying to determine the disease that is causing some manifestation. And I think to everybody that is, um, people think of diagnosis, they're usually talking about diagnosing uh, person's problems medically. But there are other examples, and an auto mechanic is actually a diagnostician. We look at an, an, an automobile and try to diagnose the problems with an automobile. It's a, seeing what's wrong with an automobile is the same problem as seeing what's wrong with a human being at a, at a computer science level. Here's actually a rule base for the automobile diagnos diagnosis problem. Now, an actual complete rule base would contain many more rules than this, but this illustrates the problem. Again, since I've been going through these rules, it would be beneficial for you to have them in front of you while I refer to them. They're on page 47 of your artificial intelligence book, and you may want to print them out before proceeding. All right, the first the three have to do with actually what we're trying to do. We want to know the problem. If the car does not start and the engine does not turn over and the lights do not come on, all three of these things imply the problem is battery. Those are the only three things that, that could in indicate that the problem is battery. If the car does not start and the engine does not turn over, does turn over, all right, so now the engine cranks and the engine is getting enough gas, well, then the only thing that concludes is that the problem is spark plugs. The engine does not start and the engine does not turn over, that's this situation, but the lights do come on, all right? It can't be the battery because the lights come on and the problem is the starter motor. Okay, so those are all the, you want to know the problem. These three rules conclude the problem. The last one concludes a piece of information which will help solve the problem. If there's gas in the fuel tank and there is gas in the carburetor, the engine is getting enough gas. So if we can find out these two things, um, we, we've concluded uh, a premise in the antecedent of rule two. All right, let's see how we can use these rule base, this rule base uh, doing both forward chaining and backward chaining. Using forward chaining first. Suppose Melissa ob actually goes out and observes her, these facts about her car. It won't start, so she knows there's a problem, right? Because her goal is to drive the car, and if it doesn't start, it's a, certainly a problem. But also the engine does not turn over. Now she does does look and there's another, she goes in and snoops around a little bit to see what could be wrong. She knows that there's gas in the fuel tank and then she even checks and sees that there's gas in the carburetor. Using forward, so we wanna see, now she goes and consults this rule base and sees how forward chaining can help her. Well, using forward chaining, if you cycle through the first rule that has all its premises true is rule four. There is gas in the fuel tank, and there is gas in the carburetor. The other three rules do not have all the premises true. And you can look at those yourself and see, but rule one, for example, says the car does not start, the engine does, does not turn over, all right, but actually the engine does turn over. Rule two says the car does not start and the engine does turn over, so those two things are true, but it says the engine is getting enough gas, and we don't know that. That's not one of the things she knows. However, when we get to rule four, there, there is gas in the fuel tank and there is gas in the carburetor, so we conclude the engine is getting enough gas. 
So in other words, now we have concluded something and we go back to our rules. Notice these rules are not sorted in any particular way. So we go back and when we get to rule, rule two, since we've added the engine is getting enough gas to the rule base, all three of its premises are true because the car does not start, the engine does turn over, we're already there. So now we conclude the problem is spark plugs. So between what Melissa was able to go and figure out on her own and the forward chaining algorithm, we were able to solve the problem. We conclude, I already said this, I, it's on the slide now, we, because of rule four, we conclude the engine is getting enough gas, and so rule two triggers. And we conclude the problem is spark plugs. All right, these are things I've already said. All right, let's use backward chaining with that same rule base. Suppose Melissa only knows these two facts. The car doesn't start, the engine does, does turn over. In other words, she's, she's, she doesn't think or is not proficient enough at dealing with cars to be able to check the gas situation. We can use backward chaining starting with each rule that concludes the problem. Rule one is tried first. But it does not trigger because a premise is false. The car does not start, it's true, and the engine does, but the engine does turn over, and rule one says the engine does not turn over. Rule two is tried next. Its first two premises are found to be true. Its third one, and there's a rule, rule four, that concludes its third premise. So backward chaining, remember how it works, it looks at the premises and tries to determine if they work. So backward chaining goes to rule four and checks its premises. Neither of them is true, and there's no rule for either of them. So we now prompt the user for their values. So now we ask Melissa, is the car getting, is there gas in the fuel tank? And she checks. We ask, is there gas in the carburetor? And she checks. And suppose when she checks, now, now she knows to do this because we asked her, we find that there is gas in the fuel tank and there is gas in the carburetor. Rule four now does trigger because its two premises are true based upon what we just learned from Melissa and we conclude the engine is getting enough gas. We now return to rule two and conclude that the problem is spark plugs. So see, both algorithms work to solve a problem, but in different ways. Forward chaining, Melissa needs to know everything up front. Backward chaining is somewhat more useful because she can put in what she knows. It could be nothing even, but the important thing is it will ask her questions. And that's, that's the strength of backward chaining. An actual production system may use both forward chaining and backward chaining in turn. That is, it could first use forward chaining to include all that it can based upon what the user's initial knowledge. If that's not enough to make a diagnosis, it then uses goal-driven backward chaining. 